Since 2003, K. Norman has tirelessly worked to achieve a vision of a better life for the thousands of abandoned and unwanted companion animals in Victoria that, through no fault of their own, end up in local council pans and event inevitably face euthanasia. Kay's organisation, Rescue with Love, focuses on rescuing, rehabilitating and rehoming small dogs, including the ones that other rescue groups won't or can't take, the old and the disabled. Some sight, don't you, sweetheart? She wouldn't let me go near her mouth. She's obviously got a very painful and festering mouth. Um, but she's a dear little soul, and I'm sure that we'll find a great home for her once we get her sorted out. So, onward and upward, it'll take us a while to get to the vets, but um, it'll be well worth it. You'll well worth it, aren't you? Yes. <laughs> This is the Nilambic Vets, the, sorry, the Diamond Creek Vets, and this is our one and only vet that we use. We used to use another couple of vets, um, but the, one, the other vet that we were using decided that they would prefer to vaccinate pets, vaccinate puppies for Pets Paradise and offer them free training um, to get their business and we considered that was ethically against what we believed so we stopped using them. anything major which no doubt we always do um, and um, 
hopefully they'll, uh, they'll go off and get bathed and flea and worm treated and then they'll have their surgery and everything tomorrow and be ready to be collected. So, okay. Yep, we're going to um, open up the dogs with Anthony at the clinic tonight. We're going to get Portia's bottom shade straight away. That'll be the first thing we do. Um, we're going to check Mia to see if she's got diabetes because she's got very bad um, cataracts on her eyes and she is drinking quite a lot, so that'll be another thing. And little Pixie here looks like she might be a little bit of Chinese crested, which is really nice because Linda, who's going to foster her, loves Chinese cresteds. So um, we'll leave these two and we'll leave the three of them. They'll have their surgery tomorrow and they'll, then they'll be collected on Sunday once they've recovered. Okay? If you just want to tell us your name and just tell us the names of the dogs. Yeah. yeah. So I'm Bridie and uh, this is Jack Happy who lives with me permanently and Rufus and Seely Booth. <laughs> Seely is a foster dog with me at the moment but um, Rufus and Jack Happy are mine permanently now but came through Rescue with Love. Um, how did you come to be part of Rescue with Love? I lost an elderly dog a couple of years ago so he was a uh, 16 years old and when he died we went looking for a new dog and um, went through the pet rescue website and found Rufus who was a rescued with love dog and from that point I wanted to get more involved in uh, the, the rescue scheme and so contacted Kay at Rescued with Love and asked how I could help and she suggested fostering would be a, a good way of helping out. Um, what does being a foster carer entail? Being a foster carer means having quite a bit of chaos in your house at times, but uh, it means walking dogs regularly and um, trips to the vet if necessary, flea medication, feeding them well, socialising them, and generally just assessing the behaviour of the new foster dog to determine uh, how it should be rehomed and what kind of environment would suit it best. Um, do you find it hard when you have to give the dogs away? Giving them away? Yeah. <laughs> there are a few tears, but uh, generally it's just really, really rewarding and all the ones that I have rehomed have just gone to really lovely, lovely homes and you stay in touch with those people who adopt them as well, which is great. So you do feel you're making a difference? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's great. Hi, I'm Linda and I'm a foster care for Rescue with Love. This is little Cookie and she came to us from around about Greensboro area. She'd been left in the pound, um, an older dog with terrible teeth uh, or abscess and everything like that. We've had all her vet work done and um, she's now just about to go to her new home um, next weekend. But she was in a terrible condition when we got her and her jaw broke during the surgery for her teeth to be out because of the infection was so bad. So she had to have her jaw wired up, that was done and that lasted for about six weeks and now that's all out and she's all good and healthy. And we quite often get little older dogs like this that make absolutely fabulous pets because they're just so settled and beautiful as you can see because he's just adorable. And, um, and then we do all the vet work for them, make them happy and healthy and we rehome them into fabulous homes, only the best homes so that they'll have everything that they want the rest of their lives and that's what I do and I do that on a regular basis. I take little dogs in all the time, find them the perfect little home and then we take the next one so that when a dog gets rehomed uh, we take the next one before it gets put down in the pound. Is that enough? Mm -hmm. um, how do you think you're going to cope with having a hand cookie here? Over? Well Cookie's been with me for about eight weeks so no doubt I'll be complete sookie la la when I have to hand her over because I've fallen madly in love with her. But we can't keep the foster dogs because they, they need to find their own little homes and um, homes where the people can give them a lot more love and time than, um, than what I can because I have my own dogs. So um, yes, it's very difficult sometimes to actually give up a dog but for the, for the benefit of the dog we have to do that and for the benefit of the ones that are actually in the pound and might die if we don't have a spot to take them. So it's very important that we that we keep rehoming the little ones um, to save the ones in the pound before they're put down because they're all worthy of homes and just because they're an older dog like Cookie doesn't mean that they're any less worthy. 
Cookie will have another nine years probably of life and she'll make her new owners really happy because she's an absolute doll. She's a beautiful girl. <laughs> Yeah, uh, my name's Renee and this is Gavin. Gavin. Um, we've been looking on a few websites in the last four or five months, I guess, to have a look at a rescue dog and um, saw Cookie probably about a month ago and fell in love with her. So I've been hassling Linda to be able to meet her and I think it's just really important that um, we look at re adopting a rescue dog just to give them a second chance, to give them a little bit of love. And, what was the process that you had to go through? Um, we just sent Linda an email and asked her a few questions about Cookie and um, filled out an application form and it's been a little bit longer just due to some health problems but yeah, just firstly met her today and then next Saturday she's going to come to our home and have a look around and see if she fits in well. Are you excited about taking her oh, home? Oh yeah, very excited. <laughs> <laughs> Want to take her home today? I'm Netta. This is Charlize. She was a, um, a an ex-breeding bitch from Puppy Farm. Um, she looks like she's bred quite a few um, puppies in her short three years. Um, she's a beautiful, um, calm, happy girl. Loves people. Loves dogs. And um, if I could, I'd kill her, but <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> so, what's involved with being a foster cat? <laughs> um, you know, all, all you need is to to be able to feed them, um, you know, keep them warm, happy, clean and loved. Uh, sometimes there's a little bit of rehabilitation involved. Um, sometimes there's some dogs that need a little bit of extra care and a bit of extra help. But uh, you know, risk of the love will help out with that if there are any issues that um, behavioural or, um, yeah, mostly occasionally you have some sort of behavioural issues and that's to be expected, you know, these dogs are in that time because often they aren't owned by people that are dog savvy to begin with. Um, so a little bit of guidance, you know, they're great dogs. Um, what did your husband think about all this? <laughs> <laughs> he just says, yes dear. <laughs> um, at first um, he wasn't keen on getting another dog yet. Um, I think he was still pining for, for our dog that had passed away. Um, and then uh, he wasn't keen on fostering. But you know, each time that um, he's been presented with something, you know, at first he's a little thing, but um, if you ask him afterwards, if you're like, are you glad you did that? Every time he goes, yes, <laughs> I'm glad I did. You know, it's not something that he would have gone out and done on his own. But I think he's, he's so happy and so proud. Um, that, and it brings something extra to him, not just me. Um, you know, although he's never been the one to instigate anything, as I said, every time you say to him later, in hindsight, he's glad you did everything for us. So do you feel that you are making a difference? I think we're making a difference, yeah. Well, to this girl I'm making a difference. To the last one I made a difference. You know, and it doesn't matter how many it is. It doesn't matter if it's one, twenty, or you know, for that dog it is, it's a big difference. Kay is an outstanding example of a Victorian making a difference to the community and her work and that of Risky with Love. Please join me in congratulating Risky with Love.